have been working with layers. There's been quite a few videos I've been working on. And now I want to show you one of the benefits of having a project that has multiple layers. So if you already caught the using overlays video, then you probably are familiar with this image. I did make some modifications to it, uh, such as taking the texture off of the vehicle, as well as enhancing some of the tones and colors in the vehicle and uh, darkening down the rest of the image. But other than that, everything else is left intact. Now, I went ahead and turned off the stamped layer for uh, the overall LUT because what I want to do is export this into a Photoshop document or a PSD file, and then I can open it in either Affinity Photo or Photoshop. So let me show you how you do that. Once you're ready to export, make sure all the layers that you want to export are actually uh, visible or they have this little bubble marked. If you have a different color than blue, then just make sure that it's filled in and it's not empty like the one that you see at the top here. Then we're going to come down to export. And the export dialog, which, you know, whole nother video I'll have to do on, uh, but there's a lot of really cool flexibility you have here. So what I'm going to do is just start working with this one. And I am going to leave the file name, the sequence number, just like so. Or actually, you know what? I'm going to get rid of those tokens and I'm just going to call this uh, car layered. And then we don't need to worry about export. So we'll leave it like so. And then I want this to ask me where to store it when exporting. And then I'm going to come down here to the bottom. Now, right now, I'm exporting this file type as a JPEG. Well, I don't want to export it as a JPEG, so I'm going to hit the drop down. And you see you get these uh, five options here. The one that we want to use is Photoshop. Even if you're not using Photoshop, you want to use the Photoshop option. Now, you can leave the profile as Adobe RGB uh, 1998. And then in the drop down, make sure you select 16 bit. This is just going to give you the most information that you want. Now, the most important thing that you have to do when you're here is uncheck this item that says flatten layers. If you leave that checked, it's going to flatten all of your layers similar to a stamped layer. And we don't want that. So I'm just going to uncheck that. This way, all of my layers are going to stay intact and I'll be able to manipulate them inside of Affinity Photo, which is what we're going to use. So I'm going to click export. It's going to ask me if I want to update these settings. I don't want to change this. I'm just going to go ahead and hit no. And then I'm going to come down and navigate to where that folder is. Once you've navigated to your folder, you'll go ahead and click open and you let on one do its thing. And depending on how large of a file you are working or how many layers you have inside of on one will determine how long this takes and, you know, even your computer. But I'm going to fast forward through all of this so that way you don't have to sit here and watch my computer nug away at making this file. So now that the file has completed, I'm left with the on one side card file as well as the PSD document. So we're going to go ahead and minimize on one here. And then we're going to open up Affinity Photo. And all I have to do now is click and drop or drag and drop that file into Affinity Photo. And you can see it's loading up here. So we'll give that a second. So now you see that Affinity Photo has read the PSD file and I have access to the entire library of what is inside of Affinity Photo of tools and uh, selection capabilities and even modifying in the layer stack here. So as you can see, it even brought over that stamp layer that has my LUT on it. So, and it turned it off for me. So if I want to turn that back on, then I can, but if I wanted to manipulate these items a little bit further, I can click on the layer, hit the V key. And now I have access to manipulate those layers even further. The downside here is it cuts off the layer. So if you remember from 
the original video, the file that I was using actually was a lot larger. But the way that it works when you convert these to PSD documents is it truncates it to whatever your canvas is. And that's what you get access to when you go into Photoshop or in this case, Affinity Photo. But if I wanted to, I can go grab the layers that I was using before and just drop them in here. But now that I have this in Affinity Photo, I can do all kinds of stuff with this image. So hopefully this helps you understand some of the capabilities of using layers and moving between on one and other layer based editors such as Affinity Photo and Photoshop. Let me know in the comment section if this is something that you would use or how you would even use this capability. And let me know if you want to see more content like this about moving layered projects and on one to Affinity Photo or even Photoshop. Now, if you're looking to pick up On One Photo Raw or assets in the On One store, consider using my discount code in the description box below. You get to save some money at checkout and I get a small commission. It's a win-win and it's a great way that you can support the content that I create here. Until the next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.